Hey guys, this is Carly with John 832 and I will be posting this video, which is the third one for the series of Once Saved, Always Saved is a Lie. Um, earlier, I posted a video regarding um, pornography and premarital sex, that it's all part of the uh, sexual immoral piece of this of this uh, post. I want you guys to know before I continue that I am not a prophet, I am not an apostle, I'm not a woman pastor. Women pastors are not biblical. I'm just a fumbling servant of the Lord whose job is to share what the Lord shares with me based on his Bible, which is his truth, and being led by his Holy Spirit. Uh, I am filled and led by his Holy Spirit. In other words, I do speak in tongues among other, sp uh, among other uh, prophetic spiritual gifts. Um, you know, as Christians, we need to to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. Uh, by, by no means does that mean that I am uh, a perfect, holy person or I'm better than you or, or anything like that. I'm not. I'm a fumbling servant of the Lord. And as much as I love the Lord, I fear him more. And, um, you know, I'm just here to worship him in truth and spirit. So if you have any questions regarding this post or this video, definitely go to the Lord, pray about it, and wait for his revelation. Um, I This this series actually was created over the summer. Uh, it took place days after our nation committed another abomination in the Lord's eyes, and that was when the Supreme Court passed the same-sex marriage law in our land. Uh, I saw a lot of Christians that were preaching against homosexuality, and they ought to be because homosexuality is a sin. But this video uh, that the Lord placed in my heart and, and with this message is that Christians need to preach about I'm sorry, we need to preach against sexual morality. I've been to numerous churches. I've been to numerous conferences. I've been to, uh, I've seen so many pastors since I opened up this ministry. And I'm telling you, I have not seen one pastor. Okay. I got, I guess probably last week was the first one I actually saw a pastor and he was talking about obedience. But in the, in the, in the theme of sexual morality, no one is talking about it. And sexually moral, sexual morality is plaguing the church. In, the, in many forms, whether it's fornication or premarital sex or pornography or sending sexy selfies or living with someone who's not your spouse or homosexuality, guess what, Christian? All those sexual sins are an abomination in the Lord's eyes. I've seen many Christians come and go who are just saying, well, you know, the homosexuals are bad and the thieves are bad and the prostitutes are bad, but they refuse to acknowledge that they're living in sexual sin day in and day out. So I just want to kind of go, I want to kind of go in quickly what the, what the scripture says and how that ties in with the sexual sins that God is not playing around. God is a holy God. God is not a respecter of persons. And if you are a Christian walking in sexual sin, guess what? He's going to have more mercy, grace, and love for the the sinner in the world than the actual Christian, because we know the truth and we're being, we are held to a higher standard. So do not be deceived with what you're hearing from people at the church. You need to get in touch with the author and the finisher of your faith and know what he loves and what he hates and what he has mandated us to be, and that is to be a holy, spotless people. So quickly, uh, based on 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, it states, Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. In this particular video, I will be talking about posting sexy selfies and texting, okay? Um, the other sexual sins that this also applies to, in addition to homosexuality, is pornography, adultery, bestiality, lust, incest, pedophilia, living with someone from the opposite sex who's not your spouse, or shacking over at your boyfriend or girlfriend's house on the week over the weekend and thinking nothing's happening. Yeah, right. You are allowing yourself to be tempted by the devil if it, when you do that. Okay, because you know that you should know better that shacking over your boyfriend girlfriend's house and being in denial, nothing's going to happen. You're just literally walking into a, a, an, an, a, an opportunity of temptation that leads to uh, fornication and sexual sin. And remember that the word says that sexual sin is, uh, you know, I'm sorry, it says in the word that sin, uh, the consequences of sin is death and sexual sin, the consequences of that is death. So having children out of wedlock over and over again as a Christian. That's also a sin because of fornication. The child's not a sin, but the fornication of the sin itself it is, okay? Um, and also hooking up and fooling around, having one night stands and polygamy. These are all sexual sins that are that are attacking the, the body of Christ at this moment and no one is talking about it. And if you are a pastor or a preacher or someone with a ministry, this is your job to warn the church that this is an epidemic, a disease, a spiritual 
disease that's plaguing many. And unless these people repent and sin no more, if the Lord calls them home today, many in the body of Christ that are living in sexual sin are going straight to hell. Now, I'm going to kind of go over some quick, uh, quickly some stats uh, that I discovered uh, about the subject of sexting. If you are a parent, it behooves you to listen to this information. I was, um, I wouldn't say I was shocked. Uh, but the numbers are staggering and it is your responsibility if you are a parent, if you have teenagers, that you need to know what is happening in your child's life so you can prevent the, the sexual immorality that's taking place through the form of sexting and sexy selfies. Quickly, sexting. It is not just a national problem. It is a global crisis with devastating consequences for young people. Not only is sexting a source of terrible cyberbullying, but it's also a criminalizing an entire generation of young people. As these statistics reveal, the problem starts with parents who do not know what is happening on their children's smartphones. For more information, please go to SelfieCop.com. Here are some quick facts about sexting. For teenage, if you, for parents with teenagers, check this out. Or even teachers with teenagers, you know, because if, if you have, if you're teaching teenagers, 11% of teens admit they've sent pictures to strangers. 80% of teens who have sexted are under the age of 18. Over half, which is, which equals to the amount of 57% of teens from a 2012 survey reported that they had been asked to send a sext. Now, for those that do not know what a sext is, it is a text in the form of a sexy provocative picture that is being sent to, uh, to another person through their phones or iPads or I guess other smartphones. 12% uh, of teenage girls feel pressure to sext. 38% of teen girls and 39% of teen boys say they have, they've had sexually, sexually suggestive text messages or emails originally meant for someone else, but it was shared with them. Plus, according to research, those teens who are sexting a proposition to send a sex are more likely than their peers to have sexual intercourse. Obviously, this is a concern and it's something that parents need to address before they find their child in trouble with sexting. All right. Those uh, stats are, are, are staggering. It, it is. Uh, it's unfortunate that it's also happening inside the body of Christ. OK, and I'm going to share something with all of you that perhaps it's not going to be nice. But as a daughter of God, I have to preach the truth with love. OK, but I need to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. To me, it's about serving God and it's about to warn people. It's to, it's about souls. OK, uh, and bringing people to Christ because See, the enemy is working overtime, okay? And the word clearly states that without holiness, no one will see the Lord, all right? And I'm here to preach the gospel, to preach the truth. I want people to be saved. I want people to experience the love and the protection and provision of God, all right? And I'm not afraid of man. I'm not afraid about the, the, the backlash I'm going to get from people. I'm not afraid of you. I'm afraid of God, okay? Because I know the truth and he has called me. He has called me to say what's, to speak the truth. You know, his heart breaks to see so many people in bondage, whether you're a non-believer or a believer. We talk about setting the captives free in the church, in, in the world, but there are captives inside the church. And if you are a pastor, it is your duty. It is your duty to warn your churches, to warn the parents about the consequences of sexual sin. And, and what I'm going to say right now, it's going to offend people, but I am sorry. You know, I'm, you know, the, the Jesus said that, you know, um, that we will not be liked, you know, because we preach the truth. He wasn't liked when he was here on earth, you know, but, but so the thing is the following. I have seen a lot of beautiful Christian women and men, Christian children of the Lord who are conducting themselves in this fashion. I see it on their Facebook profiles. I see it on their Instagrams. Sometimes I don't even know if they're a Christian or not. Okay? That's the truth. And the only reason why I know they're a Christian is because either they have a cross on their neck or they're posting scripture on one minute. One minute they're saying how the scripture, they're quoting scripture from the Bible, Matthew chapter 12, or, you know, uh, John chapter 8, or they're quoting how the, their service at church was amazing, but yet they're not living. They're not living the way they're quoting their scripture. Okay, and then all of a sudden you see them posting pictures like this. Women, daughters of the Lord, with sexy provocative pictures, showing off their curves, wearing provocative tight clothes. That's not Christian-like, and the same thing applies to men, but I see it mostly in women. Who are you fooling? The other thing I also see is the sexy selfies. This is what I see from Christian women. 
You know, the Bible says that in the end of days, people will be lovers of themselves. And what is a selfie? It's a picture that you're, you know, it's about yourself. It's loving yourself. No Christian man or woman of God has any business to imitate the world. How are we going to minister to people in the world that are sick, lost, and hurting when we ourselves, many of us, are still sick, lost, and hurting? It makes absolutely no sense. And, you know, and this is why it's so important that we are not just, you know, you know, quoting scripture, that, but the, the Jesus said that, okay, you listen to, you know, listen to the word of God, but he wants us to be doers of the word. All right. So, I mean, the bottom line is the following. Okay. The sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God unless they repent and sin no more. Okay, and sexual morality is taken in so many different fashions and forms, and no one's talking about these things. Any person that's seducing women and men online, or you're seducing your boyfriend and girlfriend, that's not your spouse. You don't do that. It's sexually immoral. You may you may think that when you send that text to your boyfriend or girlfriend, oh, well, only they see it. Let me tell you something. God sees it. And if you're a Christian and you're in the worship team and you're you know you think you're so great and you're so you know you're so anointed, guess what? You're living a lie. You're not going to fool God. You, you're not. You I mean you're, you're not going to mock God. So I want to read some scripture to you because what many fail to understand is that you know God's going to judge all, but judgment starts in His house first. And I'm going to give you some scripture to remind you that God has called us to be holy, and He's not playing around. For it is time for for judgment to begin with God's household, and if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? 1 Peter 4, 17. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. James 4, 4. For God does not show favoritism, for it is written, Be holy, for the Lord is holy. 1 Peter 1, 16. Therefore, come out of them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I and he will receive you. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death, Revelation 21, 8. Folks, as a Christian, you know, God cleansed me from sexual sin right after I got saved two and a half years ago. I love the Lord, but I fear him. Okay? We need to understand that God, uh, God holds the very air in your lungs right now. All right, he can take it away any second whenever he wants to. And we need to ask ourselves, if the Lord calls us home today, where are we going to go? Are we going to heaven or to hell? If we are a Christian who knows the truth, but yet we have slipped away from the truth, you know, and, and, and continue to insult the spirit of grace, what is he, what is the Lord going to, you know, what is the Lord going to do? The word in scripture says it right here in Hebrews. Let me pull up Hebrews real quick. Hebrews 10, 26. Uh, Hebrews 10, Hebrews, uh, 10, 26 verses, uh, 30, 26, 31. Sorry. I'm like, look, trying to do two things at the same time. Here's what the word says. Okay. For those that continue to insult the spirit of grace, Hebrews 10, 26 to 31. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who had, anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, it is, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay? So this is you. If you are a Christian who is engaging in sexual morality in any of these forms, I want you to know the following. God is madly in love with you. He wants you to repent, sin no more, fast, pray, and read the Bible, and obey Him. Live the holy life that He wants, that He wants you to, that He wants, He has called you to be. And let the Lord use you in this final hour. If you are a non-believer, I want you to know the following. I was just like you two and a half years ago. I didn't believe in anything. Okay, but I had to be on the brink of suicide for the Lord Jesus to set me free and to save me. And now I know that he is real. I do have his Holy Spirit. I do have prophetic gifts. And just like myself, there are millions, millions and thousands of people, of new Christians, that God has taken them from sin and from darkness into his light, into his peace, into his freedom. 
And that's what he wants for you too. Just call out his name. If you are being tormented, if you have no peace, you have no joy, if you are empty, if you just, if you're being tormented by demonic spirits and attacks, I want you to know, call out the name of Jesus, ask him to set you free, repent and sin no more, and just get a Bible and start reading it and have that relationship with the Lord Jesus. If you need prayer, feel free to message me. I hope this video blesses you. Feel free to share it with your friends and family. And I want you to know, that God is madly in love with you and he is calling for a holy, spotless nation of, of Christians that worship him in truth and spirit in this final hour. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and I will be posting more videos in the hours and days to come. Thank you so much for watching and listening and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.